Hello everyone, Missy here again today, and we will be talking about absolute value. So on our agenda for today, we have our materials, joke of the day, and objectives. So I'm going to go over the objectives first, and they are going to be, I can understand absolute value on a number line, and I can find the absolute value of a positive and negative quantity. So at the end of the lesson, we'll be able to do all of that after we had learned everything. So on our materials, we have paper and pencil. Again, anything to write with and write on would work perfectly fine, or if you want to follow along on an electronical device. And then our joke of the day is, why did the girl always wear glasses during math class? So I'll give you about two minutes to pause here to get those materials, and if you already have them, um, just think of the joke and the answer that it could be. So I hope we all have our materials. And the answer for our joke is um, it improves division. So um, if she wears glasses, it'll help her see better. And it just makes it funnier because it, it will improve her division. So going to a review and vocabulary, um, today we'll be talking about the absolute value. So the absolute value is the number that is the distance between the number and zero on a number line. So making sure we know that, I will give you guys a few seconds to write that down because it will be extremely important. And if not, I can come back to it um, in the middle of the lesson as well. So um, moving on, a negative number is any number that's going to be less than zero. And then our last review of vocabulary is gonna be a number line. So if we look on the number line, a negative number is anything less than zero. And on the number line, that's gonna be anything to the left side and anything to the right side is positive. So those are our review and vocabulary for today. And let's start thinking. So let's name some negative and positive pairs. So two numbers that are negative and positive. And then um, what are the relationships between those numbers? And then how does the pair relate to zero? So if you guys pause here for about three minutes to think about those and think about those answers, and then we will go over them after. All right, so I hope that was enough time. So name some negative and positive pairs. So that could be any number between um, negative one and one, negative two, two, negative three, three. So any number that's the same, um, that's from the negative and positive. So any number that's negative, the same positive are going to be negative and positive pairs. And then what is the relationship between these two numbers? So it's gonna be the same distance away from zero. So from zero, um, you're gonna go one to the right and one to the left. That gives us our negative one and positive one. So the distance, um, the relationship between these numbers are that they're the same distance away from zero along with that they are opposites. So negative one is the opposite of positive one, positive two is the opposite of negative two. Um, so those are the relationships between those. And then how does the pair relate to zero? So they're both, again, going to be the same distance away from zero um, that are the pairs. So um, any negative and positive pair would work if it was the same number that was negative as it is positive. So the absolute value. What is the absolute value of five? What is the absolute value of negative five? And what is the absolute value of zero? So I will have you guys um, pause here for another three minutes. And I'm actually going to give you guys a few moments right now to write these down. And then I would like to go back to the page that showed you what the definition of the absolute value was so that you guys can better understand. So I'll read it again um, so you guys could write it down. Um, what is the absolute value of 5? What is the absolute value of negative 5? And what is the absolute value of 0? So pause for about um, three minutes, and then I'll go back to this page because um, it will show you the definition of what the absolute value is.
Okay, so I hope that was enough time for you guys. So what is the absolute value of five? And the absolute value of five is going to be five because again, from zero, the distance that it takes to get to five is going to be five. And then what is the absolute value of negative five? So again, the absolute value of negative five will be five. It will be positive five because the distance from zero is five. And again, back at our um, review and vocabulary of the absolute value, the number that is the distance between the number and zero. So I don't have negative five on this number line, but um, imagine if negative five was on that arrow, there was one, two, three, four, five to the zero. And oops. I will actually write that down for you guys here so it's easier for you to see. And on our number line, we write the little arrows because our number line is infinite, so that means it goes on forever. So, this is our number line. So, this is negative five. It goes, oh, sorry, it's one, two, three, four, five. The distance is five between zero and negative five. So the absolute value of negative five is five. And then this one's a little bit tricky. What is the absolute value of zero? The absolute value of zero will always be zero. So there will be no change in that one. The distance from zero to zero is always gonna be zero because there is no positive or negative zero. So how do we write the absolute value? So we use the little, the two little lines to show that we're gonna find the absolute value of something. So um, on this, we're gonna find the absolute value of negative four. So when we see these two lines with a number inside or a negative number inside, we know that these two lines on the outside indicate that we will be finding the absolute value of a number of something. Um, in that instance. Sometimes you could have a negative outside the number, just like this, which means you find the absolute value of the number inside and then on the outside of it, it's going to be negative. So that could be a possibility. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's gonna be in our lesson today, but that's really good for you guys to know. So we write the absolute value with those two bars on the side so we understand. So basically anytime you see that, you're gonna know you're finding the absolute value. And then it wants us to find the absolute value of negative four. So again, going back to our review, um, the absolute value is the distance between the number and zero on the number line. So we're gonna find the distance from negative four to zero on the number line. And I actually wrote this out for you to make it a little bit easier. So we jump one, two, three, four times. So that means the distance from negative four to zero is four. So our absolute value of negative four is going to be just positive four because the distance from negative four to zero is four. So I hope that makes sense for you. Basically, the absolute value comparing on a number line is going to be the distance. So at first, um, if you wanted to always use the number line to help you out with that, that is okay. Eventually, after you do it over and over and over again, you know when you see those lines, the absolute value is going to be distance. So you can know the distance from zero to regular four is gonna be four. So the same distance from zero to negative four will also be four but using the number line right now would be our best bet because that is going to be extremely helpful for us in the long run. So I would like you guys to pause here for about five to seven minutes and find the absolute val value of these numbers on your own. So we have um, negative three, one, and zero. So find the absolute value of these three. So if you guys could stop here, use the number line, you can draw, you can use different colors. If you wanted to like write it in, that's totally okay um, for you as well. All right, so I'm going to tr attempt something. I have not done it before, but we're gonna try. So for our first one, we have the absolute value of zero. So again, we know the absolute value of zero is zero. If you guys can see my pointer here. 
So um, we know that the distance from zero to zero is always going to be zero. So the distance is zero. And then we want to use a number line to find the absolute value of negative three. So we want to find the distance from negative three to zero. So I do one jump, two jump, three jumps. So that means my distance from negative three to zero is going to be three. It's going to be positive three because that's the distance between negative three and zero is going to be three. And then our distance from um, zero to positive one is going to be one. We saw that one jump here. So our absolute value of positive one will be one. So basically, again, we're finding the distance. So the distance between zero and one is one. The distance between negative three and zero is three. So our absolute value inside those little two lines are always going to be a positive number because we're just finding the distance. Continuing on, we're going to use the absolute value to find the magnitude. So basically, the magnitude is the measure of the absolute value of its measure. So Kevin owes you $7. How much is Kevin in debt? So that means Kevin owes $7, which means he has negative $7 in his account after he pays you. So we're going to find the absolute value of this um, by putting those lines along those um, negative, around the negative seven. Um, and then we know that if we use the number line, um, the distance between negative seven and zero is going to be seven jumps from negative seven to zero, um, which means Kevin will owe you $7. So this works in a way of like temperature. Um, uh, we know that like the degrees, like in Fahrenheit or Celsius also works for this. Um, weight gain and weight loss is also the same thing. So um, again, I will read this over one more time so you guys understand. Um, so again, the magnitude is the measure of the absolute value of its measure. So since Kevin owes you $7, that means he'll have negative $7 in his account, um, which means he is $7 in debt after we do those jumps on the number line. All right, so using the absolute value to find the magnitude, if you guys could stop here for about five to seven minutes after I finish explaining, um, I would like you guys to do this on your own. I encourage you to um, use the number line as best as you can to help you out with this. If not, um, if you guys wanted to just write it out, that would work as well. So first, um, we have Kendall owes you $4. How much is Kendall in debt? We have Isabella loves to exercise. Um, she has a weight change of negative five. How much does she weigh now? Um, and then Miss Horton has a checkbook balance of um, thir negative $30. How much of the amount is overdrawn or how much does she owe? So with um, the second question, um, we don't know how much Isabella weighs at first, so we want to know how much of the change that's going to be. So how much less is she going to weigh? So stop here for about seven minutes and then um, go over these and then we'll come back together and I'll go over the answer with you. All right, so again, like we did with this example, the first example, we know that Kendall owes you $4, which means she will have negative $4 in her bank account after she pays you. So if we do negative four in the absolute value, what we need to do is find the amount of jumps it's going to take for us to get to, neg to zero. So the distance between negative four and zero is going to be four because we move, I'm just gonna show you on this one, we move one, two, three, four. So that means Kendall is in debt four dollars. So the second one is Isabel loves to exercise. She has a weight change of negative five. How much does she weigh now? So we know that um, because of Isabella's exercise, she lost about five pounds. So she is negative five pounds um, away or different from what she was to begin with. 
So we have our negative five in our um, two lines. And then that means we wanna find the distance um, from negative five to zero. And then again, on this number line, it goes one, two, three, four, five. So that means Isabella is five pounds less than she weighed before. So if she weighed like 120 pounds, she'd be 115 or anything that's five pounds less than she was before. And then our last example is Miss Horton has a checkbook balance of negative 30. How much of the amount is overdrawn or how much does she owe? So basically, um, Ms. Horton's bank account is at negative 30. So if we put that in our brackets here, our two lines, I have negative 30 here. So I don't have a number line that's large enough for this, but if you made one, that would be perfectly fine. Um, so basically, how much, how, what's the distance away from zero um, that Miss Horton is. So basically, um, if she's at negative 30, we want to find the distance from negative 30 to zero. So if you use the number line and jumped over a bunch of times, um, you would find that the distance is 30. So um, Miss Horton here um, owes $30 to the bank. So basically, this is about the same thing of what you did earlier, just using the regular absolute value, but this is put into some questions here um, for you to do and to make up your own word problems for them. So if you guys want to do a little bit of challenge, you can make, you can make up your own um, question and then find the answer or share with a partner and they can find the answer for you. Um, you guys can do a little trading if you wanted to. So basically these are the word problems of absolute value. So if you wanted to do some extra practice, let's see if this works. I really like this one. This one's called the absolute value game on onlinelearning.com. It's called math balls. So we'll start here and you click on the balls in order of um, in descending order of numbers. So from the least to the greatest. Oh, we were looking for ascending, sorry. So I have, see how on this game right here, I have the um, two lines and then I have the negative number inside, but I have the negative outside of those as well. So what you're gonna do is you would find the inside first. So the distance from 50, negative 51 to zero would be 51 positive but with that negative on the outside, that makes it negative 51. So we know that, but we have another one with a negative on the outside here as well. So we know that um, from zero to 68, it's going to be, um, the distance is 68, but again, we have the negative on the outside. So we're gonna say that one, and then our negative 51, and then, are positive 36 because zero to 36, the spaces between them is going to be 36. So basically that's how you do this game. Um, again, they want you to go from the, the least number or the smallest number that could possibly be negative to our largest number. So I see that this one is going to be um, six is next. And then the jumps from, um, negative 63 to zero is going to be 60 positive 63 so that one would come before my 81 because we want to find the distance so basically that is that is um what we have for our extra practice and then again our objectives were i can understand absolute value on a number line so that's what we did um if we go back that's what we did in our example one how do we find the absolute value we use the number line to find our distance and then um i can find the absolute value of a positive and negative quantity. So again, that's what we did with the um, finding the absolute value with the magnitude. And that's also what we did on our example one, um, because it gave us a negative number and we found the absolute value of a negative number. And we also found the absolute value of a positive number. 
So that's all we have for you today, but I hope you guys understand that. And if the um, if you guys wanted more practice along with the game that I have here, again, Khan Academy has great informational videos. That one is more of someone teaching you. So if you like that sort of teaching, that works. And then again, if you want to find some brain pop video, brain pop videos that also works as well those ones are a little bit more animated so that one will be easier if you like that kind of one so thank you so much